What is up, Premier Planet? This is current PPW official Danny Dixon here, and I'm continuing the Hispanic Wrestlers You Should Know series. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about Juventud Guerrera, also known as Juvi, also known as The Juice. Let's dive into it, shall we? Juvi debuted in 1992. He was trained by Fuerza Guerrera, Pepe Casas, and Cacique Mara. Early on his career, he was a mainstay in AAA, and he feuded with Rey Mysterio Jr. It's crazy how a lot of these episodes were mentioning Rey Mysterio Jr. That's just a true testament to how influential Rey Mysterio Jr. He wa- himself was to the sport of professional wrestling and to Lucha Libre. If you haven't checked out the episode on Rey Mysterio Jr., highly recommend you check that out. Very cool stuff. We got to talk about Rey Mysterio's career. Hoovy first gained American exposure in ECW. That's a trend that happened with a lot of guys. Psychosis, Eddie Guerrero, etc. Hoovy signed with WCW in 1996, and he was a former three-time WCW Cruiserweight Champion. He also won the WCW World Tag Team Championships one time with Rey Mysterio Jr. Crazy how many of these guys' careers are intertwined with Rey Mysterio Jr. And that's crazy that he has that much longevity in the business. But I digress. At Super Brawl 1998, Hoovy was in a blood feud with Chris Jericho in a mask versus title match. And Hooventude eventually lost that match, which forced him to unmask. And as I talked about in the episode with Psychosis, unmasking is one of the things that is like the biggest sin for luchadors you know it's worse than losing a championship because the mask to a luchador represents everything it represents their identity it represents more than just a character that connects with the audience that's who they are you know and that's like the biggest disrespectful thing that anyone can do is take a luchador's mask and that's exactly what happened with chris jericho and with juventud guerrera Hoovy rebounded though however and he eventually joined a stable called the Filthy Animals, consisting of Rey Mysterio, Conan, Billy Kidman, and more. And it was at this time where Rey Mysterio Jr. was also unmasked as well. That was a storyline that involved Kevin Nash and the NWO. Crazy, crazy stuff to think about because now Rey Mysterio is most known for his mask and his contributions with his mask on. Juventude eventually progressed through WCW, had a lot of really compelling matches, both with his mask on and without his mask. And to be honest with you, Juventude has a look that connects with the audience too, with or without his mask. You know, without his mask, Juventude just had this natural charisma that would flow through. And you know, visuals are so important in the industry. So Juventude was able to show when he was in pain and connect with the audience that way. Whereas a lot of times luchadors are very limited to how they could connect with the audience when they are in agonizing pain because of the mask. You know, a lot of people have their whole face covered when they wrestle under a mask. And that's a good thing about having your mask taken off, albeit it's the worst thing that could happen in Lucha Libre. But it allowed Juventud to grow as a singles performer, and it eventually led him to signing with WWE in 2005. Juvi was a former cruiserweight champion, and he eventually joined the Mexico stable with both Super Crazy and Psychosis. And that stable was very controversial in the way that it really leaned into the stereotypes of the Hispanic culture, you know? They had all three of them come out to the ring on a John Deere tractor, and they basically had to lean into the stereotypes that a lot of people encounter in the Hispanic culture. So it was very controversial, and I don't think it would fly in 2023, to be honest with you. But at that time, WWE let it fly, so there's that. Juventu wrestled literally all over the world, you know? He was a mainstay AAA, as I mentioned earlier, and he still is going strong today, you know? Just a few years ago, I saw him in All Elite Wrestling where he had a match against Chris Jericho 
the same person who took his mask off. They were involved in a story with MJF and Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho had to go through a bunch of trials to eventually get to MJF. And one of the trials involved fighting someone from his past. And that ended up being Juventud Guerrera. It was very interesting stuff and very interesting uh, reintroduction for many fans. And sometimes, some fans, that was their first time seeing Juventud Guerrero in action. And that's what's interesting too, because in this day and age of professional wrestling, it's so easy to find wrestlers' back catalog of matches available online. You know, with Peacock, with YouTube, Daily Motion for some of the OGs out there. You could really find all these matches that are widely available to enjoy at your convenience. WCW's whole video library is there so you could follow a lot of Juventud Guerrero's career. And it's very important to talk about this in in Hispanic Heritage Month because I feel like Juventud Guerrero is one of those guys that when you talk about great luchadors, you know, people automatically think Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero... You know, those guys, Juventud Guerrero is one of those guys that might have fallen through the fray, but definitely deserves to be mentioned again and revisit some of those matches. You know, Chris Jericho speaks so highly of Juventud Guerrero as one of his favorite opponents to wrestle, and they actually had a Talk is Jericho episode not too long after their match, and it was just very interesting stuff because Juventud Guerrero was one of those guys that, you know had a long career in professional wrestling, still going strong to this day, as I mentioned before. So it might be worth revisiting some of his matches and see what you can learn from it, see what you can take from it. Definitely, if you're studying the art of Lucha Libre, I feel like he's one of those guys that you should take a look at, you know, his way of connecting with the audience through high-flying maneuvers and also the time when he was unmasked and how he was able to connect with the audience through his visuals, which is a very important part of professional wrestling. Definitely check out his matches and also check out our matches here in Premier Pro Wrestling by subscribing to ppwlive.com. You can find a back catalog of over 500 matches from your favorite PPW wrestlers as well as our weekly Friday F and Frenzy taping streaming live so you could watch it at the comfort of your own home. Definitely recommend checking that out, as well as following us on Instagram at Premier Pro Wrestling, following us on Twitter at Premier Pro underscore, following us on Facebook. Make sure you are liking our page to stay up to date with match announcements and events. And also... Make sure you are supporting your favorite PPW wrestlers by purchasing t-shirts and other merchandise at Pro Wrestling Tees. All you can do is search Premier Pro Wrestling on Pro Wrestling Tees. Help support Premier Pro Wrestling. Help us grow. We really appreciate it. And this is Danny Dixon signing out.